Now in question 5 we're given this recurrence relationship that x n plus 1, that's the n plus 1th term in this sequence, is equal to a times the nth term in the sequence minus 3. OK, so our first job is to find x2, the second term in the sequence. And to do that, what we've do, got to do is to say when n equals 1. Because when n equals 1, we get that x1 add 1, which is x2. Make sure you have that below the line as a subscript. Equals a times, and this will be when n is 1, x1, ax1 and then minus 3. Now we know what x1 is, we're told that the first term in the sequence is 1. So x2 will be a times the 1 minus 3. And so we end up with a minus 3 for the second term in the sequence. So that's x2. Now in part b we've got to show that the third term in the sequence, that is, we've got to show that the third term, x3, in other words, is equal to a squared minus 3a minus 3. How do we do that? Well, it's easy. All we've got to do is let n equal 2 in the recurrence relationship up the top here. So, let's just say when n equals 2, what we would have would be x2 add 1, that's x3, the third term in the sequence, and that's going to equal a times xn, and remember n is 2, so that's the second term in the sequence, minus 3. Well, we already know what the second term in the sequence is. We found it in part a. It's a minus 3. So all we've got to do is literally put in place of x2 a minus 3. And then we've got this minus 3 on the end, so put that in there. And all we need to do now is just expand the bracket, and we have a times a, which is a squared, then a times minus 3, which is minus 3a, and then the minus 3 on the end. And so we have x3, the third term in the sequence, is a squared minus 3a minus 3. Now for part C, we're told that the third term in the sequence is 7. And we've got to find out the possible values of a. So we'll just move that up to the top here. And we'll, we've got room for part C in here. OK, so we're told then, we're given, if you like, given that x3, the third term in the sequence, is 7. Find a, or the values of a. All we've got to do is just put that this expression here, which is really x3, must equal 7. So therefore, we have that a squared minus 3a minus 3 equals 7. This is a quadratic equation in a, because it's got a square term. And like all quadratic equations, we need to make it equal 0. So I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. So a squared minus 3a minus 3 minus another 7 is minus 10. And that equals 0. And to solve a quadratic equation from this stage, generally, we either factorize or use the quadratic formula. But the question says, find the possible values of a, and it doesn't suggest using the formula because it doesn't say, give your answers in third form or in an, in an exact form, or express your answers so many decimal places, which would be a key phrase if we were going to use the quadratic formula. This is going to factorize then. So a couple of brackets there, and if you look at doing this, you'd have an a and an a, and then a 2 and a 5, a plus 2, and a minus 5. And that does it. We've got a squared minus 5a plus 2a, so that's minus 3a, and 2 times minus 5 is the minus 10. So that's it factorized. And so when we've got it factorized, we can say that either the a plus 2 equals 0, or 
the factor a minus 5 equals 0. And in each case, uh, well in this case anyway, we subtract 2 from both sides and that gives a equals minus 2. Or in this example here, we would have to add 5 to both sides and that would give a equals 5. So there are two possible values of a and that brings us to the end then of part C and the end to the question 5.